Hi, I'm Mary Poplin with Imagineer Systems, and I'm going to show you how to use Mocha VR inside of Avid. So what kind of tasks are involved in 360-degree post-production? One of those problems is reorienting the camera so you can see what's going on. Another is inserting titles. Another issue is inserting graphics into your shot in an equirectangular space. Another challenge is stabilizing the horizon, because obviously bumpy horizons can make the user sick. And we can also do color corrections using Mocha Roto Shapes inside of Avid, and rig and camera removals are also a common challenge. So how do you start a VR project inside of Avid? Well, it's really important that you make a custom project type. So we're going to hit New Project. We're going to call this New Avid 360 Demo. We're going to do a custom format, and we're going to do 2048 by 1024. And let's do 25 frames per second. Obviously, set these settings to whatever you like, but the important part is that it's a 2 to 1 format. Now we hit OK. Once inside of our workspace, we can make a new sequence. Let's call this 360 degree sequence. And let's import some footage. So working in an equirectangular space is not always super intuitive. Sometimes you need to be able to visualize what it's going to look like in a headset. You can always use the GoPro VR player, which you can download for free, to view your footage, just like this, and pan around inside of it. Or you can use the Mocha tools to visualize inside of Avid. So let's go to our effects, Mocha by Imagine Your Systems, grab Mocha VR and drag and drop it, right onto our clip. Now we can simply launch our effects panel and because Mocha actually automatically recognizes a VR lens, we're going to go ahead and go into our module renders. We're going to hit lens undistort and hit render. Now I can actually orient around inside of my shot. I can also launch Mocha VR and when I try to launch Mocha VR, I get this warning. It says the host is not set to full resolution. Tracking at a reduced resolution can be faster, but is less accurate. I'm going to hit cancel. That's not an error, but we're going to change our video quality menu to full because we're actually reading off of the timeline. So now when we launch Mocha, we're actually going to read our full shot off the timeline. Let's hit start and let's jump to our reorient module. In our reorient tab, I can hit show control. I can actually change where my horizon starts right inside of my reorient module. So let's look at the front camera view by hitting our 360 view and let's decide where we want to start out. I want to start out my file right here. I'm going to hit save and close and now I'm going to select reorient. Now my shot is reoriented so that when I render the user will be exactly where I want them to start out in the shot. So here's our before and here's our after. Sometimes you need to cover up an unsightly camera on the bottom of your nadir. So we're going to use Mocha VR for that. We're going to drag Mocha VR right over to our timeline, launch our effect editor, and we're going to launch Mocha VR. Inside of Mocha VR, we're going to go to our 360 degree view. And remember, echo rectangular is already applied by default in our lens tab. That's why we can switch between this view. We have several custom views available, front, back, zenith, nadir, right, left, and custom. In this case, we're going to grab our nadir. Now we can see our camera. We're going to simply draw a shape around the object that we want to cover up and turn our surface tool on. I want to make sure that this is a nice square covering my camera. And now I can go to my insert. Inside of my insert, I can select my insert clip. I can either use an insert layer, I can use the Mocha logo itself, I can put a grid over it, or I can simply import footage. I'm going to choose to import this, and we're going to import a PNG. Once I hit import, I can now have this move properly in my 360 space. Let's go ahead and turn 360 off and go right back to our echo rectangular view you can see that my insert is stuck nicely on the ground. We're going to hit save and close and inside of module renders I'm going to hit render and insert composite. Now my insert can render right inside of Avid right to my timeline. You can also use Mocha VR for some simple roto and color correction. So if I go make a new track, we're going to do a new video track right here inside of Avid. 
and I'm going to take my footage and I'm going to just drag it right to the second track. So now I have two tracks of the same footage. I'm going to come over to my Mocha by Imagineer Systems, grab Mocha VR out of my effects, drop it onto my clip, and again I'm going to launch Mocha VR. Let's say I want to make this car a lot more punchy. Or this car back here. In fact, let's do this one because it actually crosses across my border. I'm going to turn my 360 view on. I'm going to pan around to my white car. I'm going to take my X splines inside of Mocha. And I'm going to draw them right around this car really quickly. Now again, we relax for curves and we pull tight for corners. So we'll pull tighter on these wheels and pull tight where the windshield is. Everything else will keep nice and soft and round, uh, except for this corner of the car over here. Perfect! So let's go ahead and hit track backwards, and let's correct our roto shape. And what you're going to see is that Mocha is going to tween between these two spaces. We end up cutting our keyframes down to about a third of what we'd normally use, and cutting our roto time in half when we do that. Now let's go ahead and hit track forwards. And if I feel like it's starting to stretch to where I can't really see what's going on, I'm going to hit stop, select my pan tool, pan around, I'm going to correct my shapes again, and I'm going to keep tracking. Once my track is complete, I'm just going to correct my shapes. And I keep having to correct my shapes because the shapes are actually moving with the lens and the tracking data. So they're not always going to line up perfectly and follow the edges. I have to tell Mocha where the edges are. But once I tell Mocha where the edges are, it corrects over time. So now if I hit 360 and go back to my equi rectangular view, you can see that we actually move right across the edge and we move properly within our lens space. From here I can simply save and close and in my mat I can apply my mat and I can even feather it a little bit. Now I can invert my mask and I can apply a color correction below and really punch my car up. If you want to apply a mocha mask to a layer with color correction on it, you will need to apply the color correction first and then apply mocha. So I will duplicate my layer and I will drag my color correction on top of it. I'm going to go into my effect editor. Inside of my effect editor, I'm going to change my hue and saturation and contrast just so it's really noticeable. Next, I will select my layer with mocha on top of it and I'm going to option drag my mocha roto effect onto my clip. I can apply the mat, and you can see that my color correction is only applied to my car over here. And in fact, I can go back to my color correction and change values on the fly. If I wanted to isolate this car with color correction only, I could simply delete my layer beneath. Now I can render this in Avid and play it. Mocha VR's ability to isolate unlimited track masks on 360 degree video is like Animat on steroids. This workflow allows Avid colorists to collaborate with the emerging 360 degree video industry. You can also use the remove module inside of Mocha VR. I'm going to drag and drop it right onto our clip and let's go ahead and launch Mocha. Let's go to our Nadir and let's draw a shape around the object that we want to remove. From here I'm going to draw background shape to track. I'm going to call this BG, I'm going to call this remove. We want to make sure that BG is under remove because we want to hold out this camera from our track. We're going to turn the gear off because we do not need to track the camera. It's already right there for us. But we do need to track this background. So let's make this a nice and big shape. Turn our grid and surface tool on. Turn our thumbnails off. And I'm going to link to track none and let this shape just read all of the pixel information that comes underneath it like a scanner and hit track forward. Once my track is complete we're going to check it and make sure it looks like it's following along with the ground. If we feel like it is we're going to select our camera, our remove, right? We're going to go to our remove tab and let's just hit a really quick render and see if it removes our object. Let's see what that looks like in equi rectangular mode you can see our camera is gone. So if we save and close this, we can go right into our module renders, select remove and hit render. And Avid will render this right to our timeline. And so here's a before and here's an after of what that looks like. The way the remove works is we look at the background pixels for the background track and we tell Mocha to use those pixels to recreate the foreground layer. As long as our track is good and our equi-rectangular 
lens model is selected, we should be able to warp those pixels along with the entirety of the shot. The most important thing is that the background layer is tracked. The last thing I want to show you is what to do with footage that's really hard to watch. In this case, we've got this really long shot with this really wobbly horizon. When you try to watch this in a 360 degree space, it makes you feel pretty sick. So we're going to grab Mocha VR, we're going to drag it onto our footage. We're going to go ahead and go into our effect mode, and we're going to launch Mocha VR. Once we've launched Mocha VR, we want to track something on the horizon. In this case, I'm going to track these nice fluffy clouds right on the horizon. And because this is 360 degree solved already, it's going to move along properly with our footage. So let's hit track forward. We're going to turn our grid and surface tool on because we want to see what our track is doing. And please note that I have sped this track up. Obviously the beefier your machine, the better you're going to be able to tackle VR footage, but the fact of the matter is VR footage is huge and it will take you a little bit of time to track this. Once your track is complete, you can go to the reorient module and you can show your controls. I'm going to turn my grid and surface tool off and now we're going to try to align our curve with the curve of the horizon. Once we feel like we've done that, we can hit a render real quick to see if that horizon is straight. If it is, we save and we close and we hit render reorient. Now instead of Avid, we have a stabilized VR shot. And here's our before and here's our after. Now you can tell this makes a huge difference in watchability. It's the difference between having to sit through this wonky mess, which may make you nauseous, or having a nice smooth experience. And that's Mocha VR inside of Avid. If you have any more questions, we are happy to help you at www.borisfx.com.